Hey everybody, Steve Berg here from the band 1100 Springs, and I'm going to talk to you today about the importance of having a good chart for whatever song it is you're trying to play, especially if it's an original piece of music that you're not familiar with, um, and particularly if you play bass or drums, you're expected to know the song, even if you don't know it, you got to play it from beginning to end, everything in between, and if you're not able to do that, it's either going to be a train wreck on stage or a bunch of wasted time in the studio. So I know it's easier said than done, you know, as far as having a good time to prepare a rehearsal. Rehearsals oftentimes don't happen. You have to learn the song and create the chart on the fly. And that's where my good buddy Christian Dorn, drummer in 1100 Springs and drummer at Drum Arsenal Productions. He does remote drum tracks for folks all over the world. And you know, he's been very gracious to help me with knowledge that I just didn't know, and, and he does. So he, he's showed me a lot about how to make a better chart. All right, so talking about charting systems, there's a lot of charting systems out there. Um, some are more put together than others, but I think you know having a reliable one is an important tool for um, you know not only session players and people that play instruments, but songwriters, singers, really everyone, because it just helps keep everyone on the same page. And for songwriters, it can help you keep all your ideas. Um, you know, as you're changing the song, you can put everything on paper so you can go back and you can recall maybe that, you know, one chorus that you really liked. Well, what was that chord do you play? Well, there it is on the chart. So the system we're going to be talking about today is the Nashville number system. Now, this charting system at its core is essentially just a shorthand for putting chords on a page. It really is quite simple. In a key, you're assigning each scale degree a number. So if we took the key of C, we would have C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and then you could have C on top for your octave, and you would assign each one of those a number. So c would be one d would be two e would be three f would be four and would go all the way up to seven and then when you get to c again that's one again um and the perk of charting songs this way is instead of charting you know with the actual chord name and writing you know c f g g that works that puts it down on paper and that definitely works but if you have to change the key then you either have to rewrite the chart you have to transpose on the spot and if you're working in a studio that takes time now most session players can transpose pretty quickly so it doesn't take that much time but it's just easier for everyone if it's in a system where transposition is just easy and if you're thinking about it with a a number it really is easy because then if you're in the key of c c is one if you're in the key of g g is one and you can just you know change it to whatever key um, the song should be played in and that's really helpful if you're playing for singers because they often like to change the keys right so they may have a song that's, you know, in the key of F and then realize that they want to do it in the key of E. Okay, well, there you go. Or, you know, maybe they want to do it in the key of F sharp or they want to change it. So it's just a really easy way to make those changes. So um, we're going to use an example today and we're going to use a song off of 1100 Springs last album. Um, the album's called Here It Tis and the song is This Morning It Was Too Late, written by Matt Hillier. And... Um, it's one of my favorite songs on the album, but we're going to use this song and it's in the key of G. So if we're thinking in the key of G, then we would have G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, and then G on top for the octave. Um, and we would assign each one of those a number. So G would be one, A would be two, B would be three, and we go all the way up, right? And this charting system relies on the fact that certain chords within a key are typically major, minor, right? So um, in, a, in the key of G, typically our 1, 4, and 5 chord would be major. 2, 3, and 6 would be minor. Our 7th would be diminished. If we are in the key of G... 
then we have a we start on a G chord which is a one we go to our six minor which would be E minor then we go to our um, two minor we have two bars of that which would be a minor and then we have two bars of our five chord and then one bar of our one chord and one bar of five and that's the intro of the song so one thing this charting system assumes is that a number is um, it gets a whole notes value it's worth four beats long so you can see the time signature up there we're in the key or we're in the time signature four four um, and you know each one of those chords would get four beats so it's not telling you that you have to play a whole note but it is telling you that that chord gets four beats value so that one chord is worth four beats and then it would change on the downbeat of the second bar to go to that six minor um, and that's really this you know that's really the whole chart at its core there's you know there's a few other things you can write in there to tell players to maybe play on the end of a beat or to you know instead of playing a, a chord that's worth a whole note they can make them worth half notes and you can um, write all of that in but we're gonna keep it pretty simple for today so we're actually gonna play through this song and um, we're gonna play through like verse 2 and some of the chorus and I'll put the chart up here, um, you know, see if you can follow along, see if it makes sense, and uh, enjoy. Birds sing outside my window, but inside I know this bird has flown. Wish I'd seen it in her eyes, the calm was all before she'd taken flight. Oh, but I never saw it coming. Thought I had one more chance to make it right But this morning It was too late She moved on like she didn't Have another minute left away Alright, so I hope that was helpful. I hope you are able to get something out of that. And, you know, um, if you're composing songs writing songs or if you play an instrument i think this is a system that um is productive is to spend some time with because it's going to help everyone out and um you know it's going to keep everyone on the same page super important to have a good chart and you know i hope that some songwriters see this video because that could save a lot of time in the studio rather than trying to show the bass player a, a song structure that doesn't exist quite yet when you're finishing writing the song in the studio or or what have you you know just have a good chart it'll save a lot of time save some money make the song sound better too either way the chart is helpful and hope you enjoy the video <laughs>